Hey everyone, welcome back to another KSP Interstellar tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering the actual Attila thrusters and the plasma thrusters. In uh, regards to the uh, <coughs> previous tutorial, what I did, it was off the thermal turbo jets and the thermal nozzle, rocket nozzles, is it is sort of on the same principle. These uh, plasma thrusters and the Attila thrusters, they pretty much require electricity and a lot of it. Now, to produce electricity, you need to use generators. Now, of course, these generators require heat to actually make them work. Now, the more heat you give these generators, the more electricity you get. And of course, to produce heat, we do have our uh, nuclear reactors. Nuclear reactors produce a lot of heat. Now, if you stick a generator, which I have here, stuck to my actual reactor, the general rule of thumb again is the bigger the reactor, the nuclear reactor, the more heat you produce, and then the more heat that's passed from the reactor to the generator for the generator pr to produce heat. Now again, let's say the reactor produces 100 units of heat, theoretically speaking. Now the transfer between the reactor to the generator that produces the electricity, there is always a penalty. So if you're producing 100 units of heat, you'll never get 100 units transferred to the generator. The generator will maybe get 50% of it, just as an example. So let's say you only get the generator 50%. So then the generator will use those 50 units of heat and produce energy based off that. This is just a very simple solution to how this works. So again, you have your Attila thruster or your plasma thruster. You stick that onto a reactor of your choosing. The general rule of thumb is, as I mentioned before, the bigger the better. And then you have to stick your generator, your reactor to the actual generator. And as always, you do need to have radiators. Generally speaking, you will not be able to start up your ship or anything else. As a matter of fact, if you have an electric generator on board, you need to have a radiator. And again, the same principle applies. When you do start to stick your reactor on, this interstellar thermal mechanics helper will pop up. And the main idea of that is as long as it's red, it's not good. So you got to stick on radiators, that being radial radiators, you got to stick the large radiators. As you do see, if I remove the radiator, it goes red again. If it's in red, it's going to overheat and blow up or cause uh, the reactors to shut down and all sorts of mishaps are going to happen. Now, as I mentioned, these require a lot of energy. So even though I have one reactor and I have one generator, the generator is only producing what it can from the reactor and that's pretty much it. Now for this to work properly, I'm going to need a hell of a lot more. And because I currently have set up an actual uh, energy system and energy system sending off energy, beaming energy throughout the planet itself, I can use more receivers. I can use microwave receivers to get more actual energy that's being transmitted all over and then throw that as well into this. So technically I'm producing a little bit of energy on board with my thermal reactor or my generator and plus I'm harvesting more energy which I already have being generated from my energy plants. Now in terms of setting up your energy systems or energy plants, I don't even know how to call it, I'll make a separate tutorial for that. This is just to make you understand how does the Attila engine work and the plasma thruster. Now, the difference between the two is they're nearly the same thing, though the Attila thruster produces much more thrust in comparison to the plasma thruster. Of course, again, the Attila thruster, even though it has much more thrust, it has, again, less ISP. So again, it's a little bit of balance of here and there. So the plasma thruster, on the other hand, still produces a very decent amount of thrust, but has uh, much uh, higher ISP in, in regards to this. It has higher thrust, of course, in regards to the rest of the engines. You can take a look at the wiki and the sheet exactly how much. It's a very, very good engine. I do believe that's one of the last engines that you'll use, the plasma thruster. And the Attila thruster uses much more thrust, but less... Uh, less ISP, so not as fuel efficient the Attila thruster, but still a very, very powerful engine. Now, another cool thing is with these engines is they can literally take an infinite amount of power. They don't have a power limit. So if you keep throwing at them electricity, electric power, because they use fuel to combust. So uh, there is, of course, again, a huge array of different types of fuels that you can use. You can use liquid fuel. You can use, uh, you can use I believe, uh, what was that? I gotta launch the damn thing to remember. Not, 
I argon, xenon, lithium, motor propellant, and of course the liquid fuel. All of these combinations are there. The link to that I'll stick, of course, in the description below. So you can see the comparison between how the Attila is uh, holding out in regards to the uh, plasma thruster. Again, they're both still very powerful engines. Now the cool thing is the more you throw, the more power you throw, electric, electric power you throw at these engines, the more thrust they give you. So that's one cool thing. So our generator is currently online. I do believe, yes, our, our, sorry, our reactor, our generator, as you do see, it is producing maximum power of 1.2 gigawatts. So that's a pretty, pretty nice thing to do. So now if we do crank up our actual thing and we put play, you see that we are currently having now a maximum thrust of 131, which is not bad. And we're only getting 131 thrust off only the generator we have here, right? And if we take a look at the resources, we are using charged power, I presume. Let's just take a look at exactly what we're using. We're using lithium. Lithium pretty much died out, so we're down to zero. Maximum thrust zero. So let's switch. It was 135. Let's switch. Now we're using monopropellant. We have 182. It's gobbling it up like crazy, though. And again, it's down. Now let's switch again. Now we're using, what are we using now, though? Liquid, liquid fuel. You see, we have 63.3 kilonewtons thrust. We have 63.3 .3 thrust. Now, again, as I mentioned, it still gives you thrust, but because we only have 1.2 gigawatts from one of my reactors, because the generator is producing electricity off only the reactors connected to it, it pre it's producing very little. Now, if I do switch on my receivers, if you see a theoretical supply 1.23 gigawatts, I switch it on, I have 105. And now you can see di drastically the power has changed. I'm now producing 1,071 thrust. So, it does show that though it may seem that it's weak, it is weak because you're not giving it a lot of electricity. It requires a really a lot of electricity. And as you do see, it's utilizing only 30%, 27%. So at the end of the day, I think I might be wrong here. I do believe that there is a cap to these engines and how much power they can take. Power, it's 20. I do believe that there might be an actual cap I don't know, quote me wrong, leave your comments down below if I am wrong, because I am only utilizing, I see only 20% or 18% of all the power I'm getting. Power demand it is 20 gigawatts. So I do believe that there is get, uh, an actual cap on these engines. I did think that there was unlimited amount. Anyways, this is the general idea in terms of the Attila or the Plasma. Plasma is the same principle again. It uses again all the same propellants as I listed before. Take a look at the wiki to see it. Again, you're gonna need some power, Generally speaking, you need a fusion reactor that transfers the heat to the electric generator. The electric generator takes that heat and makes it into energy. Yeah. And then, of course, generally speaking, you will. there's no way in heaven's name you can actually get a plane up unless maybe you're using the antimatter reactors, which produce an insane amount of heat. And that might be possible to use a closed system. But generally speaking, you don't. You can't really use these engines in a closed system. You'll always rely on microwave receivers from outside to get electricity from your plants either on either on the ground or in the space that I currently have. So this is it for this tutorial of the Attila and the plasma thrusters. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And of course, don't forget to visit the playlist below and we shall be continuing our interstellar tutorial series. Happy gaming.